Hello everybody and welcome back to Tony Northeastern and for part two of building a way bridge and uh, as you can see I've installed another way bridge uh, when I built this colliery uh, must have been about come up to two years ago um, I had a comment at the time that there should have been a way bridge outside the office well it's taken a while and it's got one um, when I remade the uh, bases for the new way bridge and offices I peeled this one off of the base and rescored it and decided right I'm gonna put it here so it's just been painted and at some point I'll weather it um, this will be a lot lot grimier um, and dirtier than the uh, the others I'd imagine being so close to the coal yard so let's get back on with the build and here's where we left off with the centre wall being added and the edges being done um, I've had some great comments um, regarding the, the Waybridge um, from you guys. Um, what may have been inside of the Waybridge and uh, to be honest it's been puzzling me as well because I wasn't sure what I was going to find inside one of these buildings. I knew there would have been some sort of scales for measuring whatever went on to the way bridge and uh, some of you the comments have revealed certain aspects of what went on inside one of these so I've done a little bit of a, a research and I've come up with a few interesting photographs so I'll quickly show you those um, the first photograph I want to show you is of this set of scales at the Swindon Works. Um, they must use them for um, weighing up the rolling stock um, in their great big weighing offices. And these are by Henry Pooley and Sons um, from Birmingham and London. Um, these were this company was then in, absorbed into W T and Avery, which are the makers of these um, way bridges, which I found out from one of you guys, and I did a bit more research and I came up with this photograph. So th that's something that could go inside the building. And here we have a, another photograph. Uh, this was taken actually inside a Waybridge office and uh, it's taken roughly in the 1950s. What's interesting about this is this machine here. It looks like a giant scale. Um, that would be the, the indicator, but you wouldn't see it, only see it from this side. And I guess that's what he's looking at at the moment. He's looking at the weights of what's on the Waybridge at the moment so that's a little indicator but the must have been a lock and off point for locking up the Waybridge when it's not in use um, so there might have been a lever or something just here but uh, or would have been a pull lever or, or a hand lever or something for locking up the, the Waybridge This is the same photograph again, but it came out a lot better in the printer. Right, the last photograph. Not that one. This one. This is taken inside of a weight bridge, and I see you've got this ginormous um, scale there. And this is split up into two rooms as well. So you've got this room 
you can just see an outline of a door there going into the next room so all these little subtle hints and um, tips and ideas I'm getting from you guys the internet is going to make out the inside of one of these buildings very interesting to do so now that we've looked at the photographs I've noticed that the floor is concrete so we shall leave the floor at concrete so let's have a look at what we're doing at the moment so at the moment I'm working on the chimney breasts for the buildings um, with this one uh, it's quite a nice easy chimney pot to do uh, three bits of card stuck together um, and I've just cut out the the hole like you see in the photograph to separate the two chimney breasts so that's a nice easy one to do um, on this one I have cut out the inner wall um, to allow for the LEDs because with this one I'm going to have to put the LEDs up the chimney so I've cut a piece of card here and this line here represents the roof of the chimney so I'm just going to drill a, a 3 mil hole in there and I'm just going to super glue these pieces of card there and there and then once I have made the chimney up then I can cut out the hole like we've done with this one here now this one needs tidying up it's not fixed yet um, so what I'm planning to do is just put some super glue inside the hole to harden the card so I can get nice clean edges inside there So as you can see, there's just enough room for the two cables to go up through for the LEDs. It's, it's uh, 2.5 mil square in there. But the, the trick is trying to get them up through that last bit to come out that hole. So what I'll do is, once this is glued on, I shall go in with the drill at a slight angle and clean that hole out so it comes up through at a nice angle yeah it does it does look tight in there for two cables it should work so what I've done is I've added some rocket glue this side and these two edges here this edge and the inner edge I've put some super glue in so when it goes off I can run the drill bit up through there just to clean the hole out, just to be sure that I've got that extra clearance for the cables. Yes, yeah, so as you can see, I've managed to get the cables in that little 2.5 mil square. Uh, these cables are one millimeter cables so this should be okay for the LEDs um, I had to run a 1.8 drill up the center there and then at a slight angle down through there as well just so I can ease these cables through so now that they're in and I, and I know I can get them in and out again so the next thing is I've just um, put some super glue on these edges so I can clean them up and uh, flatten them ready for when I come to wrap the stone around the chimney breast. So that's that little job done. So the next thing I want to do now is on the other one start cleaning up the edges with a file. So as you can see I've got a nice square edge there now where I've been filing away so if I do the same at the bottom get that nice and square just a, a word of warning is when you're using this the super glue for doing this just hold it at a distance away from you because the, the fumes can be a little bit uh, hazardous 
but uh, it does clean up nice this card when it's had the super glue get a nice crisp edge now there's three layers of card here and I had to use the scalpel on edge forcing it down in segments and then peeling out each individual layer until I finally removed all the card Yeah, that's just, just by filing it, that's left a nice, neat, square edge. Obviously, at the top there, I want to keep that curved. So I'll just get a little bit of sandpaper, roll it up, and then just go backwards and forwards and try and keep the curved radius on the top there. And hopefully, when I come to wrap the car around, I'll get some nice um, square edges. So now that I've cleaned up the chimney breasts and I've added some strengthening cards to the corners of both of these huts, the next thing I'll do is concentrate on the bases just by painting the inside concrete um, with a satin grey. And then what I'll do then, I'll just go over lightly with some um, black just to tone it down a bit because it's going to look a bit clean to start with. So we'll just see what it looks like when it's dry. So the paint's dried off uh, now and I think I'm going to leave it as it is because it looks like a workshop floor that you would see in a, in a factory or something. So I'm going to leave it as it is. I might just add a little bit of um, grey um, powder just so it looks like it's, it's worn in a few places. So we shall leave that for the minute. Next thing I want to look at is I have here some Pico scales which have... Uh, come in the post today. So you remember that photograph where you saw that great big scale machine, this thing here. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to make that up. So the idea I've come up with is I'll cut this in half, glue both sides together and then glue the top half of this on top so we've got a scale. And then with the base that we have here, I'll just glue that to the base. Then we've got our scales machine. Let's see what it looks like when I'm done. So this is what I've come up with. As you can see, I've cut the main body in half. And I've added one of the large scales on the top. And if you turn around, there'll be another set of scales there. So. The guy at the desk can see the um, weight of the tonnage on the truck and so will the uh, driver. Um, so let's just have a quick recap. So what I've done is I've taken this and I've cut it in half. It's 26 millimeters and the center line is just above this edge here. So if you cut that in half glue both ends back to back uh, obviously lose the pip on the end there and then the next thing to do is to get the base and pair back the scales on this base and then you can glue them glue the two halves onto here once that's done and it's dried and the glue is dried that is you can then open up the hole on the top of here to I think it was one and a half millimeters I think it was and then just cut off the head of the other scale just about there and then drop that in with a bit of glue then you've got yourself some sort of scale um, weighing machine So that's my interpretation of the photograph. 
and this will just sit in between the two windows so this will sit just in between the two windows on the inside of course so that's the scales done they do take a fair bit of cutting so you just got to keep scoring it backwards and forwards until you get deep enough and then you just turn it on its side and you do the same this side and eventually you'll have scored deep enough so you can just snap it and just clean the edges up you should just snap and then you just glue the two backs like so and just clean the base off and once you've removed this piece you can just glue it on Okay, so to flatten the base, I just use a, a sanding block and then just use the finger and just do that and eventually you'll get rid of that uh, scales that are on the base that's on this one. Then you're ready to glue it on. As you can see, I have finished the weighing scales. Um, this is just my interpretation just by using the Pico scales and uh, turned out quite all right and as you can see I've added a lever there like a locking lever that's to lock the weigh bridge up when it's not being used maybe at the end of a day or, or a shift There's a few more details to add. Um, I'll probably add a little table there um, and a stool for a guy to sit and watch the scales as the lorry drives on to the way bridge. And there's probably other bits and pieces I'll add here as well. So that's that done. And now I've started to put some stone capping on the windows. I'm using a paper template so next thing to do is make a paper template for the doors so here's what I've done for the capping stones for the windows as you can see I've drawn around the top of the window just level with the top window pane and then put a center line in and then moved out two millimeters and drawn another semicircle and then cut them out as you can see here and then just drawn the stone marks on so now I'm just finishing off with the painting of the window sills and lintels um, I've had to mix three colors up to get this particular gray and it seems to match the building quite well obviously I'll have to um, weather them yet um, by adding some black powder probably um, I don't think the pen lines are going to come through now, the paints I'm using are the, the Humbrol enamel paints and um, the colours I've used was matte 34 white, matte 33 black and matte 99 yellow. I started with the yellow first then added the white to get this kind of colour here until I got something near that stone there. Once I got close to that then I added the black and um, I seem to end it up with 
what you're seeing now. Um, seems to be a good match. It looks a bit dark at the minute, but we'll see what happens when it uh, dries out. I have now added some fireplaces. Uh, there's one this side, and there's one that side. All it is, I've just trimmed some card, um, eight millimeters wide by ten millimeters high, and cut a little bit to go on the top to create a mantelpiece, and a little bit on the bottom there for a fire guard, and then a little bit of um, eleven mil by. 5mm wide for the actual fire hearth and uh, I shall paint them and that's another little bit done now that the paint's beginning to dry uh, the pen lines are starting to come through the paper which is good because I can um, highlight them later on when I come to weather them And I've gone for the open plan look inside the building so it makes it look a little bit bigger in there. Basically it's what I've seen in the photographs. So Yes, the progress has been a bit slow this week. I haven't had much time up here to concentrate on these buildings. But um, yeah, all in all it is more progress, especially with the the lever and the weighing machines or the scales. So I think that's all from me this week. Thanks for watching everybody. Stay for safe and uh, happy modeling. See you next time. Bye for now. Bye.